can be Francis Tucker congregation, whether you're just put your hands together for Bishop Calvin Francis Tucker. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm proud to present it. Proud to protect. Say go Bishop. Say go Bishop. Go quiet Bishop. I'm the shatter. Go quiet Bishop. Go Bishop. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Tell us, pray. Lord, we just give you thanks. I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. And so, Father, we thank you for this day. A day, a, a day of newness, a day of thanksgiving, a day of gladness. And so, Father, when we come, not with heavy hearts, but with thankful hearts. And so, Father, we just pray that as your word is open now, that we pray your blessing, Lord, and all who will hear your word. And that we will not only hear your word, but we will respond to your word. We give you all the praise and all the glory as we ask all of this in our Savior's precious name. Amen. Let me, well, let me greet firstly our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, head of all of us, and our soon coming King. Let me welcome also the Apostle of the House yes, and the other leaders of the ministry and our friends on Facebook and other platforms. We welcome you all in the name of the Lord and trust God will speak to you even as he speaks to me. Could you turn with me to Psalms 23? I remember one story, it was just told. And during World War II, there was a, a New Testament being circulated among some soldiers. But they said that during war, there is no unbelievers. Because knowing that you're going to die, it makes you want to believe in something. And the New Testament was torn to pieces by the soldiers. But it matters what you may think it was. They tore it up that each man could have a page. And each man read that page so that they could have the word of God in their hearts. They could meditate on the word of God. Psalm 23. And we all know it from our early days. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup on a one. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd. Question is, 
is the Lord our shepherd. Because all the other verses going down, you actually see a progression of the Lord guiding, directing, protecting, leading that person. But let me tell you, if the Lord is not in control of our lives, he's not our shepherd. He may be some figurehead, but he's not our shepherd. If we are not obedient to the Lord, then he's surely not our shepherd. The psalmist David is declared, the Lord is not hope to be, not trying to be. The Lord is my shepherd. And when he is our shepherd, he has control of us. He has total control of us. But this is when, when we are not allowing him to be in charge of us. When we are, we are not allowing him to control our steps. Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When the Lord is our shepherd, he, he, took, he takes care of us. He leads and guides us. He watches over us. Some people's protection is in the burglar bar. But when he's ready and willing, they come with acetylene in charge to cut off burglar bar or cry it out. And I heard of a case where thieves broke into this ATM and stole the whole ATM machine. They stole the whole ATM machine. Just for privacy that they could carry it to some other location to try to work this. But when the Lord is our shepherd, he becomes our protector. Some people's protection is, is area leaders and the police and the soldiers and their bodyguards. But sometimes when death comes, it comes in ways that nobody is expecting. When a heart attack comes, no bodyguard can protect you from a heart attack. When crashes in the airplane come in, no, the last thing you would want to be is on that plane, but it is going to crash. The Lord is my shepherd. It is a comforting thing. Let me tell you something. Some people say, some people hope the Lord is their shepherd. Some people wish the Lord is their shepherd. This is John 3.16. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Everlasting life is not something that one wishes for. I hope I can make it. I hope I will reach heaven. Jesus looked at the thief on the cross. And the thief looked at, the, the thief rebuked his brethren and said, Look here, man, do you not fear God? Seeing that we are in the same condemnation, we are suffering because we deserve it. But this man, the man in the middle here, he, has, he does not deserve it. He is innocent. And then he looked at Jesus and said, Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom and listen to the words of Jesus. Jesus says, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Not tomorrow, not next week, not after I go to my itinerary and schedule, not, not when I go to the, the book of life. Jesus looked at him and said, Today 
Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Today, even when you die, you shall be with me in paradise. Today, even after men write you off as a criminal, a thief, a murderer, you shall be with me in paradise. Psalm 23, the, Lord, the psalmist has that same confidence in God. The Lord is my shepherd. And Moses, he says, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Well, forever. That is confidence. Sometimes when I hear people saying, look here, I hope I can make it. Let me tell you something. The truth is this. Even for those of us who are Christian, many years, if salvation depended on us, we would go to hell. If salvation was conditioned upon us, we would go to hell. Let me tell you something. Can you imagine if you are walking and a sudden bitter thought comes to your mind and you have a heart attack at the same time, bam, you're gonna hell. Can you imagine you go into your area and gunshots are forced and a stray shot hit you? But the last thing you had your mind was a grumbling complaint and a lie that you told. Bam! You got a hell. The psalmist said, The Lord is my shepherd. And sometimes the shepherd psalmist knew that the shepherd sometimes has to discipline the sheep. Discipline them so that they will learn not to wander from him. The Son, the Lord, is my shepherd. And because he is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because he is my shepherd, he leads me beside the still waters. Because he is my shepherd, he restores my soul. Because he is my shepherd, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Because he is my shepherd, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Because he is my shepherd, he will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Because he is my shepherd, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Because he is my shepherd. But if the Lord is not our shepherd, if we don't know him as our Lord and Savior, if we're not dependent on him, if we are not walking in obedience to him, then he is not our shepherd. Do you know in Matthew, Jesus said, not all that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Some said, some will say, Lord, have we not cast out demons for your, in your name? Jesus said, I am depart from me, I never knew you. Depart from me, I never knew you. They were busy in they were active. They were active in religious duties, but they did not know the shepherd. They did not know. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So when David was talking in Psalm 23, he was pointing to Jesus, pointing to Jesus with the good shepherd and the chief shepherd. Some people put other shepherds before Jesus. Some people put titles to their name that sometimes you wonder, are they bigger than the chief shepherd? 
Because when I hear of the word shepherd, the chief shepherd, I think of Jesus. But some people give it to their leaders, chief apostles. Are they greater than Apostle Paul? Let me tell you something. Paul never called himself any professor or anything. But what Paul said was Paul, a servant of Jesus. Paul recognized himself as a servant and was willing to be a servant. Why? Because Jesus, who is the chief shepherd, humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even in death of the cross. Humbled himself and become a servant to his disciples. He washed his disciples' feet. And when Peter said, Lord, you can't wash my feet, Jesus said, if I don't wash you, your feet, you have no part or life with me. But Paul recognized that Jesus is the chief shepherd. The psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, not hope to be. Our confidence is in the word of God. Our confidence is in Jesus himself. Therefore, when the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd, we too can say the Lord is our shepherd. We too can have that confidence that he is our shepherd, willing to lead and guide us, willing to protect us, willing to obey him even when obedience comes at a cost, even when obedience comes through much trial and agony. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not be in need. I shall not lack. You know the Bible says, God will mess with contentment is great gain. No, that is not a, 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 a scripture you find being taught many times. The reason why I say that, everybody wants stuff. Everybody wants wealth. Everybody wants prosperity. For the Bible says, Godliness will contain me. Because why? Some who seeks after riches smear themselves, put themselves in a smear. Judas loved money. And when Judas recognized that Jesus was saying something totally different than what they want, he sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. But when he saw that Judas, Jesus was going to be crucified, condemned and crucified, he, he came back and dashed the money down into the temple. Not the temple, where the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and said, I am shed innocent blood. And the, the, those religious men said to him, what is that to us? And Judas went out and hung himself. He got the money, he got the silver that he wanted, but he lost out on the shepherd. He lost sight of the shepherd. So that even when Mary came and anointed his feet with oil, Judas declared, why was this money being wasted on Jesus? Was, why was this perfume sold and given to the poor? And John puts it, not that he cared for the, the poor poor, but he was a thief and he held the money back. The Lord is my shepherd. Is he your shepherd? Are you trusting him? Are you dependent on him? Are you obedient to him? 
Because if the Lord, you, if we're not walking in his steps, if we're not trusting and depending on him, if the first thing comes to us is panic and in, uh, if when stress and problems come away, the first thing we do is press the panic button. We're not trusting him. So instead of prayer, be the first resort. We panic becomes our first resort. Worry and stress becomes our resort. Heartache and whatever becomes our first resort. And, and prayer becomes our last resort. If the Lord is our shepherd, we take everything to him first. We pray about everything and worry about nothing. When Jesus was in the boat with the disciples, he told them, we will go to the other side. Jesus has spoken. If we are going over to the other side. And he went into the back of the boat and fell asleep. And as he was, the boat was sailing, a storm came up. And the disciples, forgetting what he had said, that they are going to reach the other side, they began to press the panic button, the panic alarm. Some people have what you call panic attack. In other words, whenever stress and problems come their way, they suffer panic attack. They can't breathe. They hyperventilate. You know, they, they have physical ailments. They, they don't know what to do and it's like everything starts shut down. The disciples press the panic button. When COVID was around, came about, many people pressed the panic button. When we are having gunshots all about, many people press the panic button. When problems come to us, many people first press the panic button. And then by the prayer. Sometimes when we can't find documents, papers, TV, whatever, what do we do? We press the panic button. <laughs> The disciples pressed the panic button and woke up Jesus. They said, Lord, tear us down that, that we are perishing. And when Jesus awoke, Jesus just stood up and said three words. Peace be still. And the storm died immediately. It died immediately. Why? Because the creator of heaven and earth was giving it a command. Yes. Yes. When Jesus came to where Mary and Martha was, he had heard before that Lazarus was sick. But he deliberately delayed his coming and waited. Yes. He waited until it was, he was certain that Jesus was there. Sorry, Lazarus was there. So when he came, Mary and Martha looked at him and said, Lord, if you were here, our brother would not have died. And everybody was in tears, mourning. And the Bible says, Bible, I remember when we were in Bible verses years, many years ago. Everybody wanted to remember the verse that said Jesus first. So when that was the easiest and shortest verse to memorize, Jesus went. And when Jesus came, Mary and Martha said, Lord, if you were here, if only you were here, but it is too late. It is too late, he is now dead. And the Bible says Jesus went. 
and he was said, I am the resurrection and the life. Let me tell you something in John chapter 6. Jesus looked at the Pharisees and the Sadducees and told them, Your father, Father Abraham, rejoiced to see me in his day and was glad. Then said, Look here, you are not even 50 years old yet. And you say you saw Abraham? And Jesus said, before Abraham um, was, I am. The only time that I am statement was mentioned is when God told Moses that, tell them, I am has sent you. So when Jesus says, I am, Jesus was saying, I am the ever existing one. I am the all powerful one. I am the all sufficient one. The, the, the Pharisees wanted to stone Jesus because that statement was a statement of divinity that he was God incarnate. And what they wanted to stone him. So when the disciples woke up Jesus, Jesus had all of, Jesus said before, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And so Jesus looked at the wind and said, Peace be still. Many times we want those words to be spoken of when we are going through our problems, when we are going through our trials, when we are going through our testing, when we are having problems left, right and center, when all we can hear problems in our ears, problems in our minds, problems in our hearts. But because Jesus is our shepherd, we shall not have to panic. Jesus looked at them and said, where lead take me to where Lazarus was? And then Mary said, Lord, it has been four days and this came. Lazarus is thinking, is decomposing. Have you removed the stone of pure spot? Smell coming out because it is stinking. And Jesus said, Move the throne away the stone. And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Let me tell you this. If Jesus had said, come forth, all the dead will come forth. Because Jesus is creator of, he is the giver of life and death. So if he had just said, come forth, all dead will be released. But he only said, Lazarus, so only that Lazarus would come forth. And look at it this way. Lazarus was laid flat. His body was wrapped around with spices. His arms and legs were bound up. He was stiff. More rigor mortis had come in. His body was stiff. But when Jesus said Lazarus came forth, the decay process stopped and immediately reversed. The stench of death was removed. The maggots, no doubt, that was eaten of Lazarus left. Lazarus rose by the power of God. And Lazarus moved because remember that like, he was bound up and that put it up. So he could move. But he moved by the power of God. And when he came to the entrance of the tomb, Jesus said, Loose that, loose him. And when they pulled out the bandages, Lazarus was alive. Hallelujah. I am the resurrection and the life. Yes. We do not have to fear death. I am the way, the truth, and the life. We do have to be misguided by others because Jesus is the way, the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Let me tell you something. Some soldiers was on a ship. And there was this chaplain on the ship. 
and the soldiers look at the chaplain and say, Chaplain, do you believe there is a hell? The chaplain said, no, I don't. There is no such thing as hell. You men are okay as you go to war. And the, the soldiers looked at it, listen carefully to what he said. And then the soldier said to the chaplain, Chaplain, if there is no hell, we do not need your services. You may go. The chaplain asked, why? Why are you saying that? And the soldier looked at the chaplain and said, one, if there is no hell, you, you, we don't have to depend on your comfort, even in the face of death. But if there is a hell, we do, want, we do not want you to lead us astray so that we're not prepared for it. Either way, they don't need it. Jesus is the good shepherd. The psalmist says, I, the, good, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Many people think that having money is all there is. Many people think in having fear is everything. But do you know that was the temptation what Satan came to Adam and Eve with? The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That is the, temp that is the temptation he came to Jesus with. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. But Jesus is the good shepherd. And the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. When all else fails, when pastors and apostles and bishops and missionaries and ministers fail, Jesus never fails. So my friends, our hope has got to be in Jesus. Our trust has got to be in Jesus. Our faith has got to be in Jesus. And Jesus alone. We came into this world naked, and naked we shall go. One man was buried, but he must be buried. He gave in his will. Let me be buried in a limousine in an executive suit. Let me be buried with money in my pockets. And surely enough, when he died, all of that was fulfilled. They put him in a suit, put money in his pocket, and buried him in a limousine. Dug a big, big hole, and, and a crane lowered the limousine into the ground, and then sealed it. Couple of days after that, thieves came in with an excavator and dig up back that, throw up back that, take it, take it clothes off, the money out, take it car, that show that, throw it back in the world. Well, them wash, wash that and clean that, you know. But the more, more was the, the expensive suit still you know. But they took his money, took everything, took the car and drove him back. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. When we are alone, when we are lonely, the Lord is my shepherd. When we are broke, busted, and disgusted, the Lord is my shepherd. When we have failed, and we do so often, the Lord is my shepherd. When we are on our deathbed, the Lord is our shepherd. When we have been forsaken, when mother and father forsaken us, the Lord is my shepherd. Because he has said, I will never leave you, 
nor forsake you. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The Lord is my, the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. He maketh us lie down in green pastures. He leadeth us beside the still water. He restoreth our soul. Let me tell you something. This psalm is not going to be read during funerals. Some people only read this in funerals. But its message is for life and for every situation. He restores my soul. How many times our soul needs restoring when we come across all manner of problems and stresses? When we need to relax? When our minds are in turmoil, the Lord is my shepherd. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let me tell you something. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. If you do not know the Lord as your shepherd, Heaven is not your destination. The rich man thought his riches secured him for life, but it did not secure him for death. Lazarus was poverty stricken and had nothing for this life, but Lazarus was prepared for the other life. When the rich man lifted up his eyes, he found out that the situation was now changed. Because the Lord was not his shepherd, the Lord, he did not know the Lord. He did not, he was not going to go where the Lord was. He was, he found himself in hell. In hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. And worse for him, he looked across and Chasm, and he saw Lazarus, the beggar who he never been born out some mercy. And he see Lazarus in comfort, and he himself was in torment. He ignored Lazarus in life, but in this point, after life, he was now wanting Lazarus to show mercy on him. Abraham said, Son, Remember, in your lifetime, you receive good things and Lazarus evil things. No, he is comforted and you are in distress and problem. My friends, let us not make that rich man's mistake. He thought having riches, he thought having a gun, he thought being surrounded by bodyguards, he thought by surround, being surrounded by henchmen. He thought that being able to travel. Being, he thought that having visas to go England, France, Europe, Asia, wherever, was life. He thought all of this. But death came to him and death said to him, thou fool. This night your soul is required. This night you have to give an account to God. When the rich man died in hell, he lifted up his eyes. And let me tell you something. Is when you reach hell, it is permanent. No money can buy you out. No church can pray you out. No absolution, no penance, no purgatory. Hell is hell. 
When you reject God's offer of salvation, when you reject Jesus as your good shepherd, when you reject the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world, you are telling you, you are telling God that I don't want your salvation. I would rather go to hell. I heard a story of this incident where this rat said, "Me hungry." And we need something to eat, even if it's poison. <laughs> well, if you're not going to bed hungry, so you have to eat something, even if it is poison, very yummy. My friends, Jesus wants to be our shepherd. He wants to guide us through the storms of life. He wants to be there with us at all times when your friends and family forsake you. When everybody turns their back on you, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Though your family forsake you, I am with you always. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor force, nor things present, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Jesus is the good shepherd. But he's not going to force himself on us. We can either accept him and say, Lord, be my savior. Or we can say, Lord, not now. Not, we're not ready yet. We're too young. We don't see life yet. We don't marry yet. We don't have no picnic yet. We don't travel yet. We don't get a good office work yet. The rich man thought all of that, but in hell he lived to this die of his life. Let me tell you something. When you die, when we die, our permanent state, our state becomes permanent. Let me repeat that again. When we die, our eternal state becomes permanent. In other words, the decision that we made in this life to either accept Jesus or reject Jesus becomes permanent at the point of death. So therefore, it becomes irrevocable. The rich man said, Father Abraham, send me to my brothers. It is too late. Abraham said, it is too late. For you. He said, if they were to send somebody that they will believe. They said, they have the words of Moses, Moses the law of Moses. Let them read that. He said, no. But if somebody said, no. If they refuse the law of Moses, even if somebody came back from the dead, they would not believe him. The Lord is, the Lord wants to be our shepherd. And he's willing to be our shepherd. But do you want to be him for him to be your shepherd? I'm telling you. The biggest question in life is not who you marry, where you work, where you go and live, what your career is going to be. The biggest question everybody needs to, and will come face to face with it is what will you do with Jesus? Because eternity, your decision concerning Jesus becomes permanent right at the point of death. So when you reject Jesus, at the point of death, hell you're gone. When you accept the Lord, at the point of death, you go to be with the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We're not too young to receive him. We're not too old to receive him. He wants to be our shepherd. He wants to be our friend. He wants to be our savior. But we have the choice. 
we have the option. We, the choice is ours. Whether to accept it. One thief on the cross. There were two thieves on, on two crosses. One accepted him. One rejected him. The one who accepted him, Jesus said, today you're going to be with me in paradise. That thief had assurance before he died that he was going to go to heaven. That other thief took his chance and inherited all those who were going to live to the time. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord wants to be our shepherd. But if we are not obedient to him, as I said before, he is not our shepherd. He is not our Lord. So my friends, um, our friends on Facebook and whatever platform, the choice is ours. The Lord can be your shepherd. The Lord wants to be your shepherd. But will you make him your shepherd? The choice is ours. For those of us who have accepted him, obedience is the key word. To obey is better than sacrifice. Obedience must hallmark our life. Hallmark our walk. Hallmark our daily activity. Obedience. We cannot make of disobeying God on one hand and trying to obey, trying to claim his promises on the other can't work. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you are our shepherd. The good shepherd that gives his life for the sheep. We thank you, O Lord, that when the time came, you went to the cross. Lord, you did not try to save man by your life, but you saved men by your death. For by your stripes, we are healed. By the shedding of blood, there was remission of sin. Lord, we thank you that when the Good Shepherd came, when the time came for the Good Shepherd, he stood between the sheep and death and bore in the penalty in his own body. Father, we give you thanks that now we can truly say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Father, we ask you, oh God, for those who are hearing over on the various platforms, that they too will make Christ Jesus their shepherd and trust him in life and even in death. Father, we thank you that nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so, Father, in this, we have our confidence and hope. Lord, we give you thanks. Lord, speak to us, O oh God, and continue to guide and direct our steps. Father, as we give you all, as we surrender all into your hands, Lord, as we ask all of this in our Savior's precious name. Amen. We are terrible now to talk about God. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you for your word and we thank you for using your my servant. Just let us find our hands in the Father. We thank you for using him. We thank you for speaking to me, your teacher, one who you have used over and over again. And thank you for reminding us, Lord, that you are 
I wish I heard it. I remember hearing from the it was last week, right, Sheree? Or the week before? Psalm 23. That is good. I was coming to fasting, and the Lord, I wanted to share something else with the Lord, chocolate in my spirit, and I couldn't fight it. And then when I came, my sister, my biological sister, was sitting in the back with her husband and fasting, and she came up with it to show me that this is what she was just reading to. So there was a confirmation. The Lord is our shepherd. You remind you come again to remind us who is our shepherd. That your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your friends, those that really love you and care and will be a little blessing to you whenever time. They are not your shepherd. God, the shepherd who is the Almighty God, is our main source. And the people who use to bless us are the resource. And not only that, he knows how to cut some off, especially if you get yourself attached to those sources, looking to get blessing from those doors. He you knows to chop them off and just dry up the season, and then he brings in some new reed. So he always has some new reed. And even if some choose to not to bless you, it's not God who tells, who don't not talk to them when they choose not. God know who he has some more re he always has some resource because he's the main source. And when he speaks to him, obey and do what he says to do, then they will in turn receive their blessing. So Father, we thank you for him. We cover him with your blood. We seal him with your blood. We thank you for the coverage that you have over him at all times. We thank you for the comprehensive protection, which is the blood of Jesus. You have over him, and we thank you for using him, and we thank you for speaking through him again. Thank you for that word. We need that word that to be reminded that you are our shepherd. We seal him right now in your blood, and we thank you for using him. Continually use him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you to come.